and do the second defining feature of stem cells. They can make cells that are specific to different tissues in the body. So stem cells are defined by two criteria, the ability to self-renew themselves, make copies of themselves throughout your lifetime, and second, by their ability to produce differentiated cells like beta cells, insulin-producing beta cells of the pancreas, that can actually function in different types of organs. Now, there are two types, two general types of stem cells. The first type uh, is the type that Gordon's going to talk about, and these are embryonic stem cells. These are cells that are isolated from the very early embryo. Uh, in a mouse, about two days after uh, the sperm fertilizes the egg, and in human, about uh, six or seven or eight days after conception. These cells uh, are amazing cells because in a culture dish in the lab, in addition to the lab, you can convince them to make all the different types of cells in the body. Now, they don't organize nicely. They don't have a head or a tail or a head or a feet. Uh, but you can make cells from the heart. You can make cells from the uh, brain. You can make cells from the pancreas, all types of different cells. So their, their real advantage is they can make any cell in the body. The problem is trying to convince them to make exactly the type of cell you want. And for tonight's purposes, that's really the insulin-producing beta cell of the pancreas how to convince an embryonic stem cell from the very early embryo in a dish to make large numbers of beta cells. And Gordon's going to tell you uh, some ways that you might be able to do that. Now, the other type of stem cell is a stem cell that's present in adult tissues. So, for example, there is a stem cell present in the blood that makes blood cells but not other types of cells. There are stem cells present in the brain that make brain cells but not other types of cells. There are stem cells present in the heart that, makes, that make cells from the heart, but not other types of cells. They're stem cells because they self-renew and they're still present in the adult organism. But they're specific. Unlike the embryonic stem cells, they make cells just from one tissue type. So as, uh, as Gary mentioned, uh, uh, there's a number of similarities between the brain and the pancreas. And perhaps the best one is that uh, the pancreas, and especially the hormone-producing cells of the pancreas, release, have a mechanism for releasing insulin into the blood supply. That's true of hormone-producing cells, endocrine cells, but it's also true of almost every cell, every neuron in the brain that also has a mechanism for releasing, whoops, sorry, re releasing uh, neurotransmitters that communicate between one neuron in the brain and the other neuron in the brain. And this similarity between the function of insulin-producing beta cells and cells in the brain uh, led us and, and other groups to actually look to see whether the stem cells that make the brain in the embryo and exist in the adult brain have in any similarities to the stem cells that are present in the pancreas and continue to make pancreatic cells. So we and other groups uh, have been able to isolate a stem cell from the adult pancreas, from uh, adult mice and from adult people. And I'll just tell you, just for practical reasons, just how you study a stem cell in a dish. So what we'll do is take an um, adult pancreas donated from a, a, a post-mortem human, so somebody who dies and donates their pancreas. Now, of course, most of these pancreas uh, go for transplants. And in fact, we get our pancreas from uh, uh, pancreas that are donated by people who die, but are not good enough to actually put back into people in a transplant. And so we get some of those pancreas, and we dissociate them into single cells. So separate all the cells of the pancreas in a dish. And under conditions where we have complete control of what's happening in the dish, a very rare cell in the adult human pancreas, about maybe 1 in 10,000 cells, it's a rare cell, has the ability in a dish to start to divide. Single cells will start to divide to produce large colonies of five or 10,000 cells in a week or two. So these are, this is a rare, unusual cell that has the ability to go from one cell to expand and self-renew and make 10,000 cells in two weeks. So this is the first property of a stem cell, a cell that makes copies of itself and makes large numbers of those copies of itself. But the other criteria of a stem cell I mentioned before is that that single cell that can make lots of other cells, besides making copies of itself, also makes the different cell types in the pancreas. And so what we and others have found is that adult pancreatic stem cell in a dish can make not only copies of itself, the stem cell, but also all of the differentiated cells in the pancreas, the cells that produce insulin, the cells that produce the other hormones, somatostatin and glucagon, as well as cells of the exocrine pancreas, the part of the pancreas that produces digestive enzymes. 
So this is a neat cell. There's two sorts of ways this cell might be useful in the future for treating diabetics. The first is, is, is to imagine a, a, a source of transplant tissues. So if we can isolate these cells either from people after they die who donate their pancreas, or if you can actually take a sample of the, a small dissection of the pancreas from, for example, a diabetic patient. If the stem cells are still present, and we don't know that, in a diabetic pancreas, you could take them out, put them in a dish, and expand them, get them to proliferate, make large numbers of cells, get them to make some insulin-producing beta cells. Right now, they only make about 10% of all the cells that are in one of these colonies of cells that come from stem cell are insulin-producing beta cells. But if you can get those beta cells out, that could provide, in principle, an unlimited source of transplants for diabetic patients. The other long-term promise of stem cell research is endogenous stem cells. So once, we, once you realize, or once we realize, that there are stem cells present in different parts of our body that have the ability to regenerate, then it opens up the possibility of having those stem cells in various organs, like the pancreas, getting those cells to proliferate and make new beta cells inside your own body. So this is really the future of regenerative medicine, is getting stem cells within the body, not taking them out and putting them in a dish in a lab, but convincing them to start to make new insulin-producing beta cells in the pancreas in a live person. So if we can understand a lot about how pancreatic, adult pancreatic stem cells work in a dish, then we may be able to convince them to work in a similar way in the adult pancreas inside your own body to get them to turn over more, make more cells, and make more insulin-producing beta cells. Now, I'll just mention one more uh, uh, issue that's, that's going to be a problem both for the approach that I'm talking about as well as the approach that Gordon's going to talk about, and that's the autoimmune uh, aspect of the disease. Uh, much or all of type 1 diabetes is really an autoimmune uh, disease. The immune, your immune system attacks your own insulin-producing beta cells. This is going to be a problem because even if we make new beta cells from stem cells, the immune system might attack those new cells as well. And so there's a, a deep problem of immunology of how to prevent the immune system from attacking your own beta cells. Even if we can convince the pancreas to make new beta cells or transplant them from a lab culture dish into the patient, how do we convince the uh, immune system not to attack these beta cells? And this is a problem that, uh, that's currently ongoing in a lot of different labs. So I think I might have used my 12 minutes up. Is, is that true, Gary? Okay. Uh, uh, so I, uh, thanks very much for your attention, and uh, I guess Gary's going to introduce Gordon. Thanks very much, Derek. Um, if you want to, you can take a seat down there, and I'll call you back up here at the end. Uh, we'll take questions uh, afterwards. Uh, it's very interesting because uh, some of you may not be aware of this, but you know the onset of type 1 diabetes is, is often very sudden with someone needing to go into hospital. But that process has been going on in the pancreas for uh, many, many months uh, before it becomes evident. And during that time, there is an ongoing battle going on in the pancreas between cells regenerating and dying. So these uh, are tremendously hopeful techniques that could actually influence uh, the early stages of, of diabetes and prevent it. Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Gordon Keller. Uh, Dr. Keller earned his uh, PhD, uh, PhD degree uh, in immunology at the University of Alberta in 1979. He did his postdoctoral studies um, uh, right here across the street at the Ontario Cancer Institute in 1983. And then his CV reads a little bit like the travel section in the New York Times. Um, he actually has taken up various science, uh, I didn't realize this till I, till I saw this, but various scientist positions um, in Switzerland, uh, Vienna, Austria, in uh, Denver, in the United States, in Colorado and uh, more recently at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. Um, in January 2007, uh, Dr. Keller returned to Toronto to the, accept the position of director of the McEwen Center for Regenerative Medicine at the University Health Network. Um, 